as an artist, I've worked in virtually every medium. And when I'd lost my eyesight, I had to explore other possibilities of extra, extraordinary art forms. And one of those was through ZGAT, the Zero Gravity Arts Consortium. A parabolic flight is where you go up in a jet and uh, up to about 38,000 feet and you you do parabolic in between the zero gravity and two G's. And it's about 29 seconds per parabola. I found that uh, when I was in weightlessness that I had a complete loss of equilibrium. I had, being a blind guy, I had no uh, relationship to my immediate environment. My name is Ed Gallagher. I'm the Commodore of BADS, the Bay Area Association of Disabled Sailors. The original concept of BADS was co-ability, where you have two people with complementing disabilities that are able to do together what they couldn't do by themselves. For instance, if you have a blind person like myself who couldn't, before, couldn't sail by themselves, and you had a pair of quadriplegi couldn't sail by themselves. But if you put the two of them together, uh, they could function together as a team, what they couldn't do individually. When I lost my eyesight, I thought, well, my life is pretty much at an end. Right now, at this very moment, as you watch these light rays striking the magnified eye, similar tiny beams of light are entering your own eyes. And it's by our eyes that we are able to gain a great part of our knowledge. I started out having needles shot in my eyes every week, and then they came out with time-release capsules, and, and eventually I had 15 eye surgeries. But yeah, after you've been blind a while, you learn to cope, and, and uh, it's, a, it's, a different, it's a different world. Um, after the parabolic flight, I became intrigued with the uh, relationship between myself and my environment. And so when I returned to San Francisco, we started working on uh, working out a computer system that I could sail by myself out in the bay and be hooked up with an experienced sailor on land. I've had no background in, in computer technology. For the last year, I started working with the computers and getting some technical expertise from other people. And we put together a head camera uh, hooked up to the internet with a microphone and an earpiece so that we could talk back and forth. We started playing with putting uh, cameras and, and uh, laptops together and trying to find a way of being able to broadcast via the internet. I was, uh, for 10 years, I was consulting companies about uh, IT infrastructure. They were mentioning it was uh, using Skype, you know, for uh, guiding ads. Uh, when we finally got a, a system to work, we were able to uh, get it to work through Skype. And, and Skype is a audiovisual streaming uh, technology that allows you to communicate via the internet. Okay, you are on course. Keep it right. Okay, scan to the left. Nice. To the right. Nice picture of Golden Gate. Yes, you're on top of it. Uh, as we became more experienced with uh, sailing on the bay and, and, and as the system became to work, I wanted to expand this to other modes. One of the initial ways we tried using the system was just walking around the harbor and I also wanted to try to do something as mundane as grocery shopping. All right. Can I walk forward? You can walk forward. Right. How many steps? As many as you'd like. There's no one in front of you right now. Uh, right. We found out that being able to go through a store and go shopping with the, the remote guide at the other end, being able to pick out the products that I want, it was just a, a, a super feeling of freedom. It was like I was 16 years old and, and had gotten my driver's license again.
I definitely say it was a little frustrating in the beginning, but once I was able to see what was a foot, three feet, six feet, I felt like I was better able to lead Ed. Um, also color is a little distorted. So as far as apples versus tomatoes, it's a little tricky. Those might be tomatoes. No, those are oranges. Those oh. are like, uh... Oh, like clementines? Yeah. That one kind of has a hole in it. That's not a good one. Oh, you're very good. I like the certain shot. That, you might have just picked up the same one. No. No, that one's not good either. No. <laughs> um, um, That's a, perfect, perfect. Perfect. Yes. You want me to get a couple of these? Yes. How about this one? That one's good too. Those two are good. No, that one has a big dent in it. I think four might be enough, Ed. Alright, four is good. Okay. Well, I think we might be done shopping for the day. Oh, alright. That's good. Uh, wonderful. Cool. thought, well, let's really push this to the max. And so I thought, well, why not? I used to be a skier. And I thought, well, why don't I go skiing with this system? I wanted to expand this even further. And so I wanted to continue the experiences that were successful with sailing and shopping and, and, and walking around. And so I thought, well, how would this work with riding a bicycle. Using the technology, it's very uh, simple and satisfying if everything goes okay. It's when something goes wrong that I'm totally out of my leg. Doc? Damn it. Doc? Getting... Doc, are you there? There you go. Okay. Okay. Go ahead and right 10 degrees, right 10 degrees. All right, looking good, looking good. Straight ahead. Little to the left, five degrees to the left. Okay. Now turn to the right five degrees. You're coming up on the bridge. The balustrade is to the right. Okay, you're up on the bridge. Coming down the other side. Beautiful, beautiful. Looks good. Okay. Got an open road. Open road. All right, here we go. Look good, look good. Good. Keep going. Yeah, doing fine. Oh, no, no, just slightly, left, left, little to the right, slightly, look good, look good, look good. Okay, straight on. The first parabolic flight that I went on to just really propelled me to think about other ways of relating to the environment around me. When I did that first parabolic flight, it was just almost a spiritual experience that I couldn't relate to what was around me, and so I found that I was relating to kind of an inner space. And when I returned, uh, back to earth and had to rely on my dog or my cane, I was thinking about different ways of, of functioning. Well, there are, are many different problems with the, the blind relating to uh, being on earth. 
uh, the, the same biological systems that you rely on on Earth in order to keep your balance don't work in outer space. I was looking for a, a different way of being able to function uh, without those systems. The inner space, what I call inner space, is just kind of a, a way of thinking. The, the point of the, the remote guidance system was to enable the blind to work on an equal footing with the able-bodied, either here on Earth or in outer space. The experience I've had with developing this remote guidance system it has just conjured up a whole new way of relating uh, to what could develop in the future. I just discovered a true freedom of uh, movement that I haven't experienced in the last 10 years. Now, this experience has just been a, a total flip out. I, I've, I've done some pretty crazy things in my life, but this experience and, and uh, running around blind, not being able to see anything at all, and relying on other people miles and miles and miles away from me to tell me to go left and go right, uh, I've, I've, got to be, I've got to be insane to do some of this stuff. And so it's worth it, you know, I, I didn't break anything, I'm still alive, and uh, I want to thank everybody for helping me out with this, because it's been great, best thing I've done in my life.